Well, friends, I have some breaking news on an election night that's actually not depressing. Shocking, I know. But when it comes to the Democratic Party primary between Ilhan Omar and Don Samuels taking place in Minnesota's 5th Congressional District, guess what? Ilhan Omar won. And she didn't just win, she whooped his ass. And this is really great news because if you go back to 2022, she barely eked out a victory, defeating Don Samuels by less than 2,500 votes. But this time... It's very different. She won by more than 15,000 votes, so it wasn't even close. And what is really encouraging to see is that he tried to make this a referendum on Israel and attack her for supporting a ceasefire and thinking that a Palestinian genocide is bad. But guess what? Voters rejected him. So this is really, really good news. This means that the original squad, the four, Ayanna Presley, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, they will remain intact. So we lost Cori Bush and Jamal Bowman, the expanded squad, but the original four, they will remain in Congress. Now, the reason why Ilhan Omar was able to win and Cori Bush and Jamal Bowman didn't is largely due to the lack of APAC's presence here. So you might be thinking, wait a second, I thought that APAC was involved in this race. No, APAC did not get involved in this race because they did not think that Don Samuels would be able to win. And the thing about APAC is that they like to tout their 100% or near 100% endorsement success rate, right? So if they get behind a candidate that they think is going to lose then that makes them look weaker. So they pick and choose their battles wisely here because they don't want to contribute to this narrative that they're weak or losing ground, right? They want to say, hey, being pro-Israel is good politics. Look at all of these candidates that we endorse. But I mean, Don Samuels was pro-Israel and they didn't endorse him. So they don't want to look like losers. Now, what's so interesting about this race is that Don Samuels, I think, knew he was in danger and he started to get real desperate. And the people that supported him also started to get real desperate. And there was a really interesting story that came out from The Intercept on August 11th by Jacqueline Sweet. And it's about a group called Zionists for Don Samuels, formerly known as Jews Against the Squad. And then before that, known as Jews for Richie Torres, I believe. But Zionists for Don Samuels have a WhatsApp group which includes a former staffer for Samuels, along with some Republicans and former Trump supporters, but also some Democrats, to be fair. Now, the goal of this group was to fill the void left by APAC. So they tried to work together to raise money for Samuels so he could defeat Ilhan Omar. Now, one of the individuals in this WhatsApp group was business entrepreneur and Democratic donor Michael Sineski. Now, one of his texts to the group was very telling. So here's what he says. The bottom line is, and it's a sad one, we need to be supportive on presidential level of the alt-right Christian neo-Nazis at the moment like Ukraine to fight the socialist Marxist anarchists who are supporting radical Islam. Nazis are better than Islamic terrorists at this moment in time for president. On state and city level, it's different as proof with us supporting Richie and Fetterman. Sad truth. So to reiterate, you have this group chat for supporters and donors of Don Samuels, a Democrat. And they're saying, look, we can still support Democrats at the congressional and local level possibly, but at the presidential level, we need to align with the fascists because Nazis are literally better than uh, radical Islamists. Now, it's a little bit vague. I don't really know for sure what he's trying to imply there. Maybe he's implying that Ilhan Omar is a radical Islamist. Maybe he's talking about Hamas and pretending as if she supports them and isn't just against genocide of Gazans. I don't necessarily know, but he's saying it's in the best interests for Zionists to align with Nazis at the moment. Now, it's not too surprising because Zionism is an inherently fascistic ideology, but it's just odd to see them admit that. I don't think I've seen that before. They usually try to hide the ball a little bit, but he's just saying in this group chat, yeah, we should probably align with the Nazis because that's going to be better for Israel. Interesting. See, this is why so many Jewish people have tried to explain that Judaism is not the same as Zionism. And the willingness of Zionists to literally work with Nazis, the most anti-Semitic people in the history of the human race is kind of evidence of that. Now, this is just one person, so you can say he doesn't represent other Zionists, but I mean, 
this is very, very telling. Now, Sineski gave a statement to The Intercept after those texts leaked, and he kind of just doubled down, saying, while I've mostly supported Democrats, the rise in anti-Semitism within the party has shaken my confidence. Given the stakes, I now feel that the current Republican Party, despite its flaws, offers stronger support for Israel and Jewish safety in America in regards to the presidential race. So in other words, Democrats have become too anti-Semitic in my opinion, so it's best that we work with fascists and literal Nazis to fight anti-Semitism. Cool. Cool, dude. Very, very smart. Work with the party that calls people who don't support them crappy Jews. That's what Trump says. Work with the party that features the Jewish space laser lady. I mean, it's just, it's comical at this point, right? So that's one of the disturbing things that went on behind the scenes by Don Samuel's boosters, and it speaks to their desperation. They knew that he probably wasn't going to win, or it would be more difficult for him to win since he didn't have the backing of APAC. But that doesn't yet speak to the depth of Don Samuel's desperation, because Jeremy Slavin, a senior advisor to Senator Bernie Sanders, says, In the past 24 hours, Ilhan Omar's Democratic primary opponent has appeared on Fox News for an exclusive interview interview, had volunteers make calls encouraging Republicans to vote for him, and been caught illegally coordinating with a super PAC. Crushing it, my guy. Now, there's a lot there, but I just want to focus on one aspect of that, and that is his campaign trying to court Republicans explicitly. Now, for those who don't know, Minnesota has open primaries, which I'm not against inherently. So uh, technically, what this means is that anyone can participate in them, including Republicans. But since it didn't look like Samuels would have enough support with Democrats to defeat Ilhan Omar, he started to actively court Republicans and sent out messages like this. My name is Jess. And I'm a volunteer working for the Don Samuels campaign for Congress, calling to see if you would support Don for Congress in the primary on August 13th in the state of Minnesota. If you are a, you can vote in the primary, whether you are a Republican, Democrat, or independent. So it's important that you get out and vote. Now, to be clear, this is perfectly legal. There's nothing necessarily scandalous about this. But the reason why this is important is because it tells you the kind of Democrat that Don Samuels is. He had Republican donors behind the scenes in WhatsApp going to bat for him, and his campaign was actively courting Republican voters, which says that he doesn't have support with the Democratic Party base to win. Now, the reason why I think open primaries are good is because if you happen to be a Republican and you really like the Democrat, then you're able to vote. But typically, you don't you don't really see a campaign court the other party's base because that usually doesn't work unless they make a direct appeal to them unless they really plan to be more right-leaning right so it's good because i think people should be free to make the choice that they want to make but if you're going to focus on that that shows that you you can't win with your own base so i mean if he were to be elected what kind of democrat would he be well he'd be a democrat that's very conservative like george latimer like wesley bell the kinds of democrats that defeated cory bush and Jamal Bowman. So that didn't happen though. He lost and look, he went down swinging. He got real fucking desperate and the people supporting him got desperate, but he lost. And now, even though at the start of this primary process, APAC said they wanted to knock out all members of the squad, they only managed to defeat two. Now those are very big losses. And I think that the left needs to do everything we can to protect power going forward because getting members of Congress elected is very difficult. But going forward, we've got to figure out some plan to combat this. Now, another thing that was working in Ilhan Omar's favor is that since APAC wasn't involved in this race, she was out fundraising him. And that's key. I hate this, but it's true. Money more often than not is going to decide how these house races play out. And thankfully, Ilhan Omar had the advantage here because she has a lot of grassroots support because she is one of the best members of Congress. So look, she survived, and I don't think that she has to worry about Don Samuels going forward. I was afraid that she was vulnerable since he came so close to beating her in 2022, but now that she mopped the floor with him, I don't think she has anything to worry about. So the original members of the squad are protected. What we have to do is regroup, formulate a strategy going forward, going into the next elections, and make sure that we don't just protect the gains that we've made, congressionally speaking, but we continue to expand the squad because we need more members like them, not less. But for right now, 
let's celebrate because we've had a lot of really bad losses with Corey Bush and Jamal Bowman. So this right here, I think deserves us taking a little moment to just be hopeful and uh, feel some relief because uh, I was worried about this one, to be honest, but thankfully turned out okay.